for our first report, the man who traced that killer storm, meteorologist Al Duckworth. Hurricane Camille started out as a tropical storm on the 13th of August, some 60 miles west of Gay Cayman Island. Moved northward through over the western tip of Cuba, became a hurricane on the 15th of August, and continually moved toward the New Orleans area. Camille cannot be considered just another hurricane or an ordinary hur hurricane. It was a record breaker. Now, while all the damage has not been accessed as yet, we don't know how much it's done, we do know a few things about it. Its winds hit 190 miles per hour, and that's a very high wind speed for any Atlantic hurricane as this one is considered. The internal pressure, the second lowest ever recorded in this hemisphere, down to 26.61 inches of mercury. And if you look at your home barometer, you'll see that's off the end of the dial. Also, and probably the most destructive force of any hurricane, is the water that it brings along with it. Camille took 20 feet of water inland along the Gulf Coast. And until this time, the record high water for the United States from a hurricane was 15 feet. This happened in September of 1884 in the Tampa Bay area. And most of the damage that you see along the Gulf Coast was done by water. Camille was a killer, one of the worst hurricanes of this century, if not the worst. We'll have to wait, check the record books to see just how bad it was. But I think the city of New Orleans should feel thankful that the storm was not larger, nor did it come closer to New Orleans than it did. If it had come closer, or if the storm were larger, if the winds were not concentrated in a very small area close to the center, this would have made all of the hurricanes that hit this area look like a Sunday school picnic.